All right, assalamu alaikum everyone. Can someone please confirm if you can see my screen? Yes, sir, we can see your screen. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's begin then. This is going to be a relatively shorter class. Uh, we will just be doing some practice questions and hopefully try to end by uh, 9.30 at max. Okay. I'm not home right now and I'll not be able to turn my camera on for this class as well. I had my laptop with me, but it's charging has ended now. So I can't charge it either. So I have to just do it like this. Okay. So I hope you can see my screen clearly. If my voice starts lagging in the middle for some reason, please do let me know so I can repeat what I said. Okay, so we were doing trigonometry and uh, we did a number of different concepts in the last session. Basically just uh, mostly background uh, to be able to solve equations like these. So there was a lot that we discussed in the last class. Uh, we started with this, how we can, or how we used to have uh, the definition of sine, cos, and tan functions specific to right angle triangles earlier because we had hypotenuse, adjacent, and perpendicular defined only for right angle triangles. But the problem was that in right angle triangles, we can only have acute angles. So sine, cos, and tan were only defined for acute angles using the using these ratios. But when we tried on our calculator, we were getting results for sine of 130 as well, which is not an acute angle. We were getting an angle we we're getting cause 340 uh, result for its cause of 340 as well, which is not even an angle in, a tri in any triangle. We're getting an a getting an answer for tan of 440 as well. We that was an angle that's even bigger than 360, and we were also getting sine of negative 20, so we could have negative angles as well. So we understood all of this. How we can have negative angles? How we can have angles more than 360? So this was uh, what we did. We said, whenever we, we are measuring angles, we do that from this positive X axis. If we are going anti-clockwise, we uh, consider the angle to be positive. If you're going clockwise, we consider the angle to be negative. And using this, we learned how to write down angles in each quadrant. So if you are going uh, if you have, for example, this orange line, we looked at how the angle of this orange line could be called 120 degrees or 480 degrees or minus 240 degrees at the same time. It could be called any one of these angles. And in fact, there are many other possible angles as well. You could just keep adding 360 to it and subtracting 360 from this to get many other possible values that are also going to be valid uh, numbers to uh, describe this angle, right? So we talked about this in the last class. We talked about this concept, how we have some of the sine, cos, and tan functions, positive or negative in some of the quadrants. So we talked about in the first quadrant, we have sine, cos, and tan positive. In the second quadrant, we have only sine positive and cos and tan are negative. In the third quadrant, we have tan positive and sine and cos are negative. And in the fourth quadrant, we said we have cos positive and sine and tan are negative. So that's what we did in the last session. Uh, we understood the logic of all that. And we said that you will have to remember this ASTC. You would need to remember that in the first quadrant, all functions are positive. In the second, only sine is positive. In the third, only tan is positive. In the fourth, only cos is positive. So this was the takeaway from all of that discussion. ASTC, you need to remember this in which quadrant, which functions are positive and which are negative. That was one thing that we discussed. We also discussed the concept of this basic angle that we often denote using the letter alpha. And what we need to know, need to know about basic angles is whenever the basic angle of something is equal, the magnitude of sine and the magnitude of cos, the magnitude of tan of all of those angles turns out to be turn out to be the same. So we looked at these examples. For instance, uh, if we had these different angles, 30 degrees here, 150 degrees here, 210 here, 330 here. What's special about all of these angles? What's common in all of these angles? 
all of them have a basic angle of 30 degrees. What's the basic angle? It's an acute angle with the horizontal axis. Since all of them have the same basic angle, we say when we find sine of these angles, all of them give us one over two as the result. The only difference is some of them are positive and some of them are negative, but all of them are one over two. Similarly, if we find cause of all of these angles, all of them have a magnitude of under root three over two. All of them have the same magnitude. And if we do tan of all of these angles, all of them have the same magnitude under root three over three. The only difference is some of them are positive, some are negative. And how do you decide that? You decide that using AFTC. If the angle is in the first quadrant or the second quadrant, sine is positive. If the angle is in the in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant, cause is positive. If the angle is in the first quadrant or the third quadrant, tan is positive. Otherwise, they are negative. So there are two important things when we solve trigonometric equations that we need to figure out. One is the basic angle and the other is quadrant, which quadrant the angle lies in. So that's what we use whenever we are supposed to solve equations, right? So we discussed all of that background yesterday and then we used that to solve equations like these. So if you have sine theta equals negative 0 0.5 and theta is between zero and 360, we understood how we could solve this equation. We said, we're going to start like this, so that we're going to first find the basic angle. How do you find the basic angle? You're going to make the right side positive and replace this theta with alpha to make it something like this. And we also discussed the reason for this, why we do this, but that's the process that you need to follow now. Replace theta with alpha, make the right side positive, find the value of alpha from this. The value that you find here is going to be your basic angle, basic angle of 30. Now this basic angle 30 could be any of the four quadrants. It could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. How do you decide which quadrants you're going to be looking at? You look at, you decide the quadrants based on this sign. This is negative and you know that a, S, P, C, in the first quadrant, all are positive. So that means that's not what you can consider because here the sign is negative. In the second quadrant, sign is positive. So that's also not possible. In the remaining two quadrants, tan and cos are positive. That means sign is negative. So you say this angle is supposed to be in the third quadrant or the fourth quadrant. And then you write down the possible angles in those quadrants. One of them turned out to be 210 and the other was 330 given this interval. So you'll always have an interval given because otherwise you could have infinitely many possible answers. So in this case, the interval was zero to 360. And we said within that interval, you can have these two answers, 210 or 330. Okay, so that's an example that we did with another example, cos theta equals 0 0.2. Use the same logic here. The interval was different here. Interval was starting from minus 180 and it was going up to 180. And in this case, since the interval was, interval was going in the negative direction as well, we said it's also possible to get a negative answer. So we'll, when we draw quadrants, we also go in the clockwise direction to see if there's any angle in the clockwise direction in the negative direction that falls in our range. And when we did that, we got two results from that. Theta was equal to either 78.46 or minus 78.46. That's what we discussed in our last session, okay? So we learned how to solve equations primarily. So remember what the process was, you find the basic angle and then use quadrants based on this positive or negative sign to figure out your solution. Now we will be doing a few more examples in this today. First, I asked you to do all of these different examples. I asked you to solve all of these different examples so we could discuss them today. So first of all, let me know how many of you are done with all of these. Can I have raised a fence from those of you who have done all of these five questions that I asked you to do?
So I told you it should not take you more than 20, 25 minutes. So it was pretty doable. All of you should have done this. But I only see Rajal's hand raised. What about the rest of you? Okay, how many of you done with at least two of them? How many of you attempted at least two of them? All I'm interested in is whether you were able to attempt or not. I'm not asking you whether you able whether you did them correctly or did not do them correctly. I'm only asking were you able to at least attempt them? Did you at least attempt them? That's all that I require. Okay, good. So at least I have more hands raised on this. All right, let's have a look at these questions then one by one. So let's start with the first one. Tan theta equals under root of three. We need to solve this equation first of all. Okay, let's solve this equation. Tan theta equals under root three and the interval is from minus 180 to 540. Now, how do we do this? Find the basic angle, replace theta with alpha. So it becomes tan alpha equals under root three. We have to make the right side positive in this case, it's already positive, so we don't have to do anything with that. We say tan alpha equals under root three. And we find the basic angle from this. Alpha equals tan inverse of under root three. What do we get from this? Tan inverse of under root three? Angle is in degrees here. So your calculator needs to be in degrees mode. So it's 60 degrees exact. Okay, so alpha is 60 degrees. Okay, so we found the basic angle. Now we have to think of quadrants. Y equals salam Abdullah. Y and X. Okay, so now let's think of quadrants. Tan is positive, right? It's tan theta equal to under root three. That means tan is supposed to be positive. Where is tan positive? Tan is positive in the first quadrant because in the first quadrant, all ratios are positive. And then ASTC in the third quadrant as well, tan is positive. So these are the two quadrants that we are going to be focusing on. So basic angle 60 could either be here in the first quadrant or here in the third quadrant. Now, what are the possible solutions. Can you write down the possible solutions in the chat box in the given interval? Can you write down all possible solutions? All of you? What are the possible values of theta? What are the possible values of theta? Can I have response from all of you? Aima, Abdullah, Aisha, Hazim, Naima, Rajal. Okay, so I have uh, multiple answers here. So Hazim is saying it's minus 240 and uh, 60. And uh, what else? 240. Okay, then I'm I saying it's... Uh, 60, 240, and 420. Okay. 60, 240, and 420. That's what Abdullah is saying as well. Minus 120. Okay. So I must added one more solution there. Minus 120. That's good. Minus 20. Minus 20 is not a solution. Minus 120. Good. Abdullah and Aima, you got that correct. Okay. Let's try this out. So we have the basic angle that's 60. 
we have to look for possible values in the first quadrant or in third quadrant. So let's start from the positive side first of all. This is the first angle that we get. This is 60. So the first angle is 60. That's possible. Then we keep going on like this. This is the target. What's the 180 plus 60? Other possibility of theta is 160, and that gives us 240. So that's another another possible answer. 240. So one value is 60, another is 240. Now notice the upper limit of the interval. It's 540. That means we can go one full circle. And then come back to these, these angles again as well, because 540 is bigger than 360. That means we can complete a circle and come back again. So what if we do this? That's, that's going to be 360 plus 60, which is 420. That's another possible solution. And then if we go further like this, we complete one circle. And then come back to this angle. What about this? This is 360 plus 240. And that's 600. But that's outside the interval. So we can't go any further. 600 would be outside the interval. So this is not possible. So on the positive side, we have written down all possible angles. But now notice, the interval also can have negative values. So you also have to check in the clockwise direction. So now you go in the clockwise direction and you get this as the first angle. What's this angle now? This is 180 minus 60. But since we're going clockwise, we put a negative sign outside. We say this is minus 120 degrees. These are the four possible answers that we have here. Theta equals 60. Theta equals 420. Theta equals 420 and theta equals minus 120. These are the possible answers. Make sense? Any problem with this? No, sir. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. Sin x equals under root 3 over 2. Okay, so it looks like there's something interesting happening with the election results because I'm getting messages for tweets from my students. Uh, what's the update? Just, just give me a minute. So, yeah. Does anyone know the update until now? Sir. I'm sorry, just give me a minute. Okay, so sine x equals under root 3 over 2. Uh, we need to solve this equation. Now, inter the interval is from minus 2 pi to pi. Okay, now, you see, whenever you have angles written in terms of pi, remember, they're going to be in radians. And even if they're not written in terms of pi, but you do not see a degree sign on top, that means we're talking about radians. So when you have degrees, you would always have this degree sign on top. Okay. If you don't have that, that means it's radians. Now in the next example that I just showed you, the interval is from minus two pi to pi. This is in radians. Okay. This is in radians. Okay, 
sin x equals under root 3 over 2, we first have to find the basic angle. So we just follow that same process that we did before. Let's find the basic angle first of all. Sin x equals under root 3 over 2. Let's find the basic angle. Sin alpha equals under root 3 over 2. Replace x with alpha and make the right side positive. That gives us sin alpha equals under root 3 over 2. Okay. Now let's find the basic angle. What's the basic angle? Sine inverse of under root 3 over 2. Can somebody tell me what this is? Pi by 3. This pi over 3. Remember, your angle is supposed to be in radian. So change your calculator mode to radian for this. Okay. Change your calculator mode to radian first. And then do sine inverse of under root 3 over 2. So alpha turns out to be pi over 3. That's your basic angle. Now you need to decide which quadrants you can be in. How do you decide that? Sine is positive. You see sine is positive. You have to look at the sine in that original equation. If there was a negative here, then you have to look at the quadrants in which sine is negative. But in this case, it's positive. So we say it's either the first quadrant because in the first quadrant, all ratios are positive or the second quadrant because in the second quadrant, only sine is positive. So it's either the first quadrant or the second quadrant. Now the basic angle is pi over three. Basic angle is pi over three. So it's either going to be here or here. Right, these are the two possibilities. Now let's start looking for the possible answers now. Remember we have to start measuring angles from this positive x-axis. What's the first angle that we get? This is the first one that we get. We say x is equal to pi over 3. That's the first possible answer. Okay, let's go further. What about this one? This is going to be pi minus pi over 3. Remember, this is 0. This is pi over 2. 90 degrees is pi over 2. 180 degrees is pi, so this is pi. Then 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2, 1.5 times pi, that's 3 pi over 2. And then you have 2 pi. Okay. So this angle here would be pi minus pi over 3. And that results in 2 pi over 3. Make sense? So x is equal to 2 pi over 3. That's another possible answer. But now notice... If we go further than this, this is the next angle that we get. That's more than 2 pi. That's going to go outside the range. So we can't have any more angles on the positive side. So what we do now is we also have an interval on the negative side. We have some values on the negative side. So now we go in the clockwise direction instead. Okay. Let's go in the clockwise direction and see what we have in that direction. Clockwise, this is the first angle that we get. What's this angle? This is pi over 3, right? Angle in straight line is pi, and then plus pi over 3. But since we're going clockwise, we put a negative sign with this. So it becomes minus 4 pi over 3. Okay. And then you can go like this. Here, what does that become? That is going to be 2 pi because angle in a complete circle is 2 pi. Subtract from that pi over 3. 2 pi minus pi over 3. But since we're going clockwise, we put a negative sign outside and this becomes minus. You can do this on your calculator, 2 pi minus pi over 3. That should give you 5 pi over 3. So that's minus 5 pi over 3. Okay? And these are the possible answers that we get from this. We have four possible answers. X is either equal to pi over 3 or it's 2 pi over 3. or it's minus 4 pi over 3, or it's minus 5 pi over 3. 
these are the four possible answers that we get for this. Is that okay? Make sense to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now we have this sine theta equal to zero. Now we need to solve this equation. Sine theta equal to zero. Let's try this now. Sine of theta equals zero. Okay, so how do we start? Just like before, we say, let's find the basic angle first of all. It becomes sine of alpha equal to zero. And then alpha equals sine inverse of zero. Do that on your calculator. That should give you zero as the result. Right, sine inverse of zero is zero. So the basic angle turns out to be zero. Now think of which quadrant you're going to be in. Well, uh, sine is positive in the first and second quadrants. And sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrants. Which quadrant are you going to be in? What do you think? Which quadrant should we be in? Uh, first and second. First and second, why? Uh, because the value is... Is the value positive? Is zero positive? No. Zero is neither positive nor negative. Zero is in between, right? It's not positive. It's not negative. It's none of them. Okay? So we can't say it's the, it's the first or the second quadrant. We can't say that. Okay? So oh, how do we so. decide this then? So how do we decide this then? Zero comes between positive and negative, right? But if you are going from negative numbers to positive numbers, zero comes between them. If you're going from positive numbers to zero to negative numbers, zero comes between them. So zero is basically going to be between positive and negative. What that means is when we go from second to third quadrant, zero comes in between, right? So zero can be here on this line. When we're going from this sec uh, from fourth quadrant to first quadrant or first to fourth, zero comes in between here as well. So we could also be also be here in this line. Since the basic angle is zero, that means the angle from the horizontal axis is zero. So that means one possibility is that we are here on the right side. What's this angle? This is zero. So one possible answer that we've got, therefore, is theta equal to zero degrees. That's one possible answer, okay? Then if we go like this, here as well, the basic angle is zero, right? Basic angle is also zero here. What does this angle become? This is 180 degrees. So the other possible answer is 180 degrees. Now, what's the interval? The interval is from zero to 360. You can keep going on. You come back to this line again. This line would have an angle of 360 as well. Is 360 in your interval? Yes, 360 is also part of your interval. So that means theta can also be 360. These are the three solutions that we get for this equation. It could be zero, it could be 180, it could be 360. Make sense? Any problem with this? No, sir. No, sir. Let's take another. Let's take another example. Okay, good. Let's consider the next example. Next, we have sine of theta equal to negative one. <laughs> let's solve this equation now. And now the interval that's given is from minus three sixty to plus three sixty. How do we start? Again, we find the basic angle. How do we find the basic angle? We replace theta with alpha. So it becomes sine of alpha. Make the right side positive. It's negative right now. So make it positive. So it becomes sine alpha equals one. <coughs> find the basic angle. The basic angle turns out to be 90 here. 
where is 90 going to be now 90 is also in not in any of the quadrants just like 0 was not in any quadrant it was actually on the axis and on the x axis 90 is going to be on the y axis we start measuring the angle from here 90 is going to be on the y axis it's either going to be here on the positive side of y axis or here on the negative side of of y axis now we know sin is positive in the first quadrant and in the second quadrant it's negative in the third quadrant or in the fourth quadrant between the positive quadrants it's also going to be positive of course right positive to positive it's still positive so on this line on this upper side sin is positive but on the lower side here is negative and that's what we want we want the sign to be negative so that means this is where we can be the green shaded part that i have there now you can see what angles you can find in this given into for that what are the possible answers what do you think can i have the chat box for this Okay, I'm sorry, I got disconnected. I think you can see my screen again now. Yeah. So, what possible answers do we have here? <clears throat> yes, Hazan, that's correct. Can I have a response from everyone? Okay, let's try this. So, since we can be on this green shaded part, no, Ima, that's not correct. Remember, we always measure angles from the positive x-axis. So, we're going to start from here. Okay. Let's look at what we have on the positive side. On the positive side, this is the first angle that we get. What's that? That's two hundred and seventy, right? And on the negative side. This is what we get. This is minus ninety, and that's it. On the positive side, if you were to go full circle and come back to it again, it will go outside three sixty. And similarly, on the negative side as well, if you were to come back here, that will be beyond minus three sixty as well. So within the interval, we have these two possible answers: two hundred and seventy and minus ninety. Is that okay? So sometimes you can have uh, a basic angle such that the result turns out to be on one of the two axes, either on the x-axis, like in the previous example, or on the y-axis, like in this example. When it's zero, the value is zero. Then it's between the positive and negative quadrants. Otherwise, you can. Look at the sign like this. If it's negative, now that means it's between negative and negative. If it was positive, we would say it's between positive and positive, and so on. Is this clear to everyone? Any questions on this? All right. Let's look at the next problem. Then. Let's look at the next example. This is the next one. So I'll give you. Let's do solve this quickly. So, can everyone please solve this quickly and let me know what the solutions for this equation are? The last one here. Cos theta equals negative two. What do you get from this?
it gives maths error. It gives math error. What does that mean? So you don't have any solution for this. That's what it means. If you were to try solving this, you would do it like this. You'd say, let's find the basic angle cos alpha equals two. And then you do cos inverse and it turns out this is not possible. Now, why is that? The reason for that is sign cause functions, their values can only be between minus one and one. Their values cannot go beyond these two numbers. Sign has to be between minus one and one and cause also has to be between minus one and one. Okay, it cannot go beyond these values. Tan does not have a limit. Can be, uh, tan can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Tan can have any value, but sine and cos are supposed to be between minus one and one. So in this case, if we, if you have an equation like this, cos theta equals a negative two, this does not have any solution, right? Because there's no value, value of theta that would give you cos equal to negative two because cos can only be between minus one and one. So sometimes when you're solving equations, you do end up getting something like this. You would say this is not possible. There's no solution that you get from this. All right, any questions on this? This basically happens because remember how uh, sine and cos and tan were defined. If you think of the right angle definition, if this is the perpendicular, and if this is the angle that we're talking about, and this is the base, and this is the hypotenuse, remember how sine used to be defined perpendicular over the hypotenuse. Now, Hypotenuse is always the longest side of the, of a right angle triangle. So hypotenuse is always going to be bigger than perpendicular. So the result from this can never be more than one, right? Similarly for cause base over hypotenuse, since hypotenuse is always going to be bigger, the result can never be greater than one. However, tan is perpendicular over base. In that case, anything is possible because perpendicular and base, any of those two sides could be bigger. So there's no limit that we have for tan. However, sine and cos, both of them are only going to be between minus one and plus one. Okay. All right. So I hope that makes sense. That's how we solve trigonometric equations. Okay. That's how we solve equations involving sine, cos, and tan functions. Okay, so there are no problems here. There are no questions in this. Let's discuss our next concept quickly. And that is trigonometric identities. So some, a lot of times what you have to do while solving equations is before you get to that stage where you have sine theta equal to something, cos theta equal to something, tan theta equal to something, you have to use some identities to make, to basically convert your equation to this form. So you won't get straightforward equations like these in the exam generally, like sine theta equals zero or sine x equal to this. You would have to do some working before this to be able to get to this point while solving solving equations. And once you get to this point, then you follow this method that you've that you've done here. But before this, you also have to do something else sometimes. So for instance, you would have an equation that looks like this. You could have, for instance, uh, this equation. Uh, sine square theta plus let me think of one. It's a two sine square theta plus uh, cos theta equals zero. Let's say we want to solve this equation, right? Now, how do we solve this equation? We have a sine function and we have a cos function. In order to be able to solve equations, we want only one of them. We want either 
just the sine function or just the cos function. If we have both of them here like this, we can't solve this equation. Okay, this is not solvable unless we convert it to a form in which we only have cos or only have sine. Okay, now how do we do that conversion? We have some relationship between sine and cos functions and tan, uh, tan, sine, and cos functions. Let's understand what those relations are. Now, before that as well, there's some notation that you need to know of. <laughs> Let me write that first of all. And that is, if you have something like this written, sine theta whole squared, what that means is, you want to find the sine, value of sine first and then square that. Now, this is something that is used a lot in uh, while you're solving some equations that you have sine theta squared. Since it's used a lot, there is a short form of writing this. There's a short form of writing this and that looks like this. Sine theta whole squared. This can also be written as sine squared theta. Okay. Now you might think why it's not sine squared theta squared or sine theta squared, right? Why, why, don't, we have, why don't we have squared on theta? Sine is a function that's applying on theta. Right, so it's not something that's a product sign. It's not multiplying by a theta that you'd have square here and also square here. That's one thing. That's why we don't write it like this. And secondly, the correct way of writing this, as in the proper conventional, the mathematical way of writing sine theta whole squared is actually this. However, since we will be using this function so many times in our working, this is just a short way of writing that. This is a short form of writing that. It does not mean anything mathematically. What it means is this thing, okay? Sine square does not mean anything. It's actually supposed to be sine theta whole squared. But whenever you see something like this written, sine square theta, you should understand that's the same thing as sine of theta whole squared. Okay, that's a notation that you need to be familiar with. Sine square theta is just a short form writing sine theta whole squared. And similarly for cos theta whole squared, you have cos square theta. For tan theta whole squared, you've got tan square theta. Okay, so this notation you need to be familiar with. Whenever you see sine square theta written, that means it's sine theta whole squared. Now, this notation is only applicable for positive powers. If you have sine inverse of theta, or if you have sine theta whole raised to the power minus one, that is not the same as sine inverse of theta. We can't write it like this. Why? Because sine inverse is actually a totally separate function. It's a different function. It's actually the inverse of sine. It's not the same thing as sine theta whole raised to the power minus one. Sine theta whole raised to the power minus one would actually be one over sine theta. That is what it's, it's actually supposed to be, one over sine theta. That's not the same thing as sine inverse of theta. So these two are not the same are same. So for positive powers, you can write it like this. You can write uh, sine theta whole square both ways like this. For negative powers, if you have to have a power, then ha it has to be written like this with brackets. The one on the right side is the inverse function. It's the sine inverse function. That's a different function. Sine inverse is not sine raised to the power minus one. Sine inverse is a different function. Okay, so that's something that you need to remember first of all regarding notations. Now, once you understand these notations, we basically have two identities that we have in paper one, only two identities. For now, we have some more later, but for now, we have two identities. One is that sine square theta plus cos square theta 
is identical to one. That is one identity that we have. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is identical to one. And the second identity is tan theta is identical to sine theta over cos theta. These are two identities that we need to know about. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is identical to one and tan theta is identical to sine theta over cos theta. Okay, have I explained you explained this to you before at some point what an identity means? These three lines like this. Have we talked about this before at any point? In any of the earlier no, topics? Sir. No, sir. No? Okay, let me quickly explain this. You will uh, basically come across this uh, throughout your A-levels a lot, uh, a, lot, a lot of times in paper three in particular. Uh, here you only have it in trigonometry, but you'll find this later in other topics in paper three as well. So let me just quickly explain what an identity means. So basically it's different from an equation. An equation is something that is only true for some specific values of x. x means whatever the variable is. An equation is something that's only true for some specific values of x. Identity, on the other hand, is true for all values now what does that mean let's try to understand this using an example let's say we have an equation like this 2x plus 3 equals 7 or let's say equals uh, 15 we have this equation now, when we solve this equation, we get one answer from this, which is x equal to 12 over 2, 6. This equation is only true when x is equal to 6. This equation that I've written, this is an equation. It's written with two horizontal lines like this. This is only true when x equals 6. Otherwise, it's not true. If we input x equals 7 here, then the left hand side and the right hand side are not equal. True means that the left hand side and the right hand side they would be equal to each other. They're only going to be equal in this case when x is equal to seven. Uh, sorry, six. Only then the left hand side and the right hand side are equal to each other. If I had any other value of x, any other value, let's say I had x equal to ten, then the left hand side is twenty three, the right hand side is fifteen. They're not equal. So an equation is only true for some specific values of x. Identity, on the other hand, is true for all values of x. And that's represented using three horizontal lines. For instance, if I have something like this, 3 into x plus 12, that is identical to 3 into x plus 4. Now, this is true for all values of x no matter what value of x you input on the left side and on the right side, the left hand side and the right hand side, they're always going to be equal. Why is that? Because these two are just two different forms of the same thing. The left hand side and the right hand side, they are identical to each other. There's no difference between them. You can't even solve it as an equation. If you were to try and solve this as an equation, you would not get any answers from this. You can't solve identities. You can try that. You get 3x plus 12, that is equal to 3x plus 12. Everything gets canceled out. You get 3x minus 3x plus 12 minus 12 equal to 0, 0 equals 0. There's no specific value of x that you're getting, which means no matter what value of x you have here, this is always true. Okay, this is always going to be true because zero equals zero. That's always true. All x terms get canceled here. So that's the difference between an equation and, and an identity. 
an equation is something that is true for only some specific values of x. If we have a linear equation, you get one solution. If you have a quadratic equation, you can often get two solutions. In trigon trigonometric equations, you can get more than two solutions sometimes as well. But the equation is only true for those specific values. And identity is true for infinitely many possible values. Uh, and not just that, it's true for any value. No matter what value of x you input, both sides are always going to be equal. That's what, what an identity is. Okay? So it's always true. Okay? For identities, we use these three horizontal lines like this. So what we have, what I've written here, these are identities. That means no matter what value of theta you input here, this left-hand side is always going to be equal to one. You can try that. You can try, for instance, any value of theta. You can try sine 20. You can try theta equal to 20. You can try on your calculator sine 20 whole squared plus cos 20 whole squared. Try that. You'll get one from that. You can, you can replace 20 with any other value. The result is always going to be one. Okay, that's what it means to be an identity. Okay. All right. So these are two identities that you will need to use while you are solving equations. And as we'll figure out later, you'll also need to use them sometimes to uh, prove other identities. But we'll talk about that uh, later. Uh, from the first identity, if we rearrange this, we get something like this. We get sine square theta identical to one minus cos square theta. And we can also get cos square theta identical to one minus sine square theta. Which means if we wanted to convert sine square to cos square, we could replace sine square with one minus cos square. And if we wanted to replace cos square with sine square, we could replace cos square with one minus sine square theta. So it's used for converting between sine square theta and cos square theta. Okay, it's used for conversions like these. Similarly here on the right side, if you have sine theta over cos theta, you can write that as tan theta. And sometimes you also need to use this variation of this, that if you square both sides, tan square theta, what would that be? That would be square theta over cos square theta. So you can also use this. If you have sine squared over cos squared, that can be written as tan squared. Okay. This is what uh, you need to know as far as identities are concerned in paper one for now. Uh, there's one exception for this uh, second identity. Let me write that here. The exception is cos theta here cannot be zero. And that's understandable because if cos theta was equal to zero, you would have zero in the denominator. Division by zero is not possible. That's undefined. So as long as cos theta is not equal to zero, this identity holds true. Okay, so because cos theta is in the denominator, denominator cannot be zero. So that's an exception that we have here. But apart from that, this is always true. Okay, now, we will have a look at one example in this. Before that, let me quickly explain where these identities come from for those of you who are interested. Uh, so let's talk about the first one. Let me, uh, yeah, let me just write it down first here. Sine square theta plus cos square theta. Why is it equal to one? You can try this. What's the definition of sine? The, uh, you can use the old definition to make it simpler. Sine square theta plus cos square theta. That has to be written as sine theta whole squared plus cos theta whole squared. Remember, we talked about this, that this is just a short form of writing this thing. Now, what is sine theta? Sine theta we used to define as perpendicular over the hypotenuse. So it's perpendicular over hypotenuse squared plus cos theta was base over hypotenuse whole squared. Right? And if you were to simplify this further, it becomes perpendicular squared plus base squared. If you take LCM, this, is divided by hypotenuse square like this. Now, what is perpendicular square plus base square? Perpendicular square plus base square is hypotenuse squared. And we have hypotenuse square over hypotenuse square. They get canceled. 
and we have one as the result. So no matter what the value of theta is, the result of this is always one. All right, so that's where this identity comes from. Similarly, the, the other one, if you have sine theta over cos theta, if you start from there, what is sine? Sine is defined as perpendicular over hypotenuse. Right, that's how we used to define it. Cos was base over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse and hypotenuse get canceled. What are we left with? We're left with the perpendicular over the base. What's perpendicular over base? Perpendicular over base is tan. That's tan theta. So that's why no matter what the value of theta is, that's not even relevant. The result always turns out to be that. And so that's the background of these two identities. That's where they come from. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is identical to one and tan theta is identical to sine theta over cos theta. Okay, so this is what you need to know now. Uh, this derivation is uh, not something that will be tested on. This is just for your own understanding where these identities come from. It was a simple proof, so we, I thought we could discuss it. But these identities are going to be given in the formula sheet. You will need to be able to use them. Okay, so this will be given sine square theta plus plus square theta is identical to one. From that, you can infer these two things that sine square equals one minus cos square and cos square equals one minus sine square and tan theta equals sine over cos that will be given you can also infer this from that that tan square theta would therefore therefore be identical to sine square theta over cos square theta now let's quickly discuss one example and then we end now you can do the first row of questions that is assigned in the worksheet apart from where you have where you're asked to prove identities so when they ask you to prove some identity, you can skip those parts for now. But apart from that, you should be able to do the rest of them. Okay. Apart from proving identities, you should be able to do the rest of the problems. Let me quickly show you one example in which you have to use this identity. And then we end. So one very uh, short one. Yeah, let's try this one. Question number four. So that's going to be pretty quick. Let's try this. Question number four from the worksheet. After this, please make sure that you attempt. Now you have time. You have three days before our next class. You should be attempting the first row of questions from the worksheet that's assigned. Sir. Uh, apart from the proving identities for parts. Just skip those. Apart from that, you should be able to do the first row. Yes, Abdullah. Uh, sir, have you assigned the questions uh, in the classroom? Yes, I uh, maybe not yet. I actually do it right now, so I don't forget later. Uh, I'll just open the page at least so I remember after class. B1. Class work. No, okay. It's not uploaded yet, but it will be uploaded after class. Okay, I, I have this page open, so I'll remember. I'll upload it right after class. You'll have time until Monday to attempt some of those questions. Okay. Thank you for the reminder. I'll do that after right after class, inshallah. Okay, so let's solve this equation. Solve the equation three sine square theta minus two cos theta minus three equals zero for theta between zero and one eighty. Okay, now what's the equation that we need to solve? We need to solve this equation three sine square theta minus two cos theta minus three equals zero. Now the problem is we have both sine and cos here. We can't solve this equation unless we have only one function, either sine or cos. Now, what are the identities that we have? Let me write them down here. When you're solving these questions, you would have the formula sheet in front of you. These are the identities that are written there. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is identical to one and tan theta is identical to sine theta over cos theta. Okay. Now we have sine and cos, both of them. Can we convert cos to sine somehow or sine to cos somehow? 
we can because we know sine square theta plus cos square theta is identical to one. If we were to rearrange this, we could get sine square theta equal to or identical to one minus cos square theta. And this is something that we could use here. We could say instead of sine square theta, we could write this as three into one minus cos square theta. So what we've done is we've replaced sine square with one minus cos square using this identity. Okay. And now we have something that's only in terms of cos. Now in this case, we could only convert sine square to cos, not the other way around. We could not convert cos to sine here because cos does not have power two. The power of cos is one. Cos does not have power two. This is the actually important thing that I should mention here. Uh, yeah. So sine square theta plus cos square theta is identical to one. Yes. However, sine theta plus cos theta is not the same as one. It's with the squares. Okay. You can't say that you just take under root here on both sides, take under root, uh, uh, take under root here and take under root here. And that will give you sine theta plus cos theta. That's not, not how indices work. If you have power one over two here like this, there's a plus sign in the middle. You can't bring that power one over two on each of them separately. That That's not how it works. If that would work, then this would also be true. A plus B whole square would also be equal to A square plus B square then. But that's not true, of course, you remember. This is also not going to happen then. Sine theta plus cos theta is not the same as one. So don't do this. Don't replace sine with one minus cos theta because that's wrong. And don't replace cos theta with one minus sine theta. That is also wrong. You can only use this identity if you have cos squared or sine squared. Okay, these are not going to work. With single powers, you can't use this identity. Okay, keep that in mind. So in this case, for instance, we could not say that cos theta could be replaced, replaced with sine one minus sine theta. You can't do that. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember. Otherwise, uh, a lot of students end up doing this, that they replace cos with one minus sine or sine with one minus cos. That's incorrect. Okay, so assuming that we've done this now, Let's simplify this. 3 minus 3 cos square theta minus 2 cos theta minus 3 equals 0. And 3 minus 3 get cancelled. And we have minus 3 cos square theta minus 2 cos theta equal to 0. We could multiply by minus to make it positive. That gives us 3 cos square theta plus 2 cos theta equals 0. That's an equation that we need to solve now. Now, if you had some constant here as well, like maybe if you had something like this, then you would solve it like a quadratic equation. Like using substitution, remember, we've done that in quadratics. You could substitute something like this. You can make it 3u squared plus 2u plus 2 equals 0, and then find the values of u, and then replace cos theta with u, uh, replace u with cos theta at the end, and then solve that. But here, you don't necessarily need, need to do that. Uh, this can be solved without substitution as well because there's no constant. You could just take cos theta common here. If you take cos theta common, that leaves you with three cos theta plus two inside. So it's factorized already now, which means either cos theta equals zero, that's one equation that you get. And the other equation that you get is three cos theta plus two equals zero. From the first equation, we have cos theta equal to zero. What was the interval that was given? The interval is from zero to 180. Now, what we do is we find the basic angle, cos alpha equals zero. What's the value of alpha that we get? And degrees, cos inverse of zero, that will give us uh, 90 degrees on our calculator. Now, figure out which quadrants we can be in. Well, if the basic angle is 90 or 0, we are in any quadrants, we are on axes. 
So in this case, we are going to be on the vertical axis, on the y-axis. But remember now, cause is positive in the first and fourth quadrants, and 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 it's negative in the second and third quadrants. Now, since alpha is equal to ninety, that means we could either be. So remember, we measure angles from the positive x-axis. So me measurement has to start from here. But then since the basic angle is 90, we could either be here above or we could be here. Which one of them is possible? Both of them because we have plus minus. We can have zero between them. We have plus minus here. We can have zero between them. So both of them are possible. We could have 90 as the result as well. We could have 90 as one solution. And we could have 270 as another solution as well. However, since the interval is only from only until 180, that is why we don't consider 270. Okay, because the interval is only until 180. If the interval was bigger than that, then we would consider 270 as well. In this case, we don't because it's outside the interval. So the only answer that we get from this is 90 degrees. Okay, that's the result that we get in, in the interval. The other is outside the interval. Okay, now what about the other equation? We do the same thing here. We first make cos theta the subject. Cos theta equals minus two over three. Find the basic angle. Cos alpha equals two over three. Make Replace theta with alpha, make the right side positive. What's the basic angle that we get from this? Cos inverse of two over three. What's that? So that's 48, zero. zero. How is that zero? Is your calculator in uh, radian mode? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about degrees here. Oh, yes, sir. So alpha is 48.19 degrees. That's the basic angle that I get. Okay, now since the value of cause is negative, now we have to think about which quadrants we can be in. Cause is negative in the third and the second quadrant or in the third quadrant. So we could have 48.19 here. Or in the third quadrant. However, the third quadrant is going to be outside the interval. So we exclude that. Because remember, the interval is from 0 to 180. Third quadrant would go beyond 180. So we don't consider that. We only consider this possibility. And what's that? The angle turns out to be 180 minus 48.19. And it turns out to be 131.8 degrees. That's the other possible answer that we have. Is that okay? Any questions on this? Any problems? No, sir. No, sir. So now you should be able to attempt most of the questions from the first row that I'll be assigning in a few minutes. So try those questions. We will look at some of them in the next class and also learn how to prove identities in the next class and stuff. Okay, that's it for now. If you have any quick questions, you can let me know. Otherwise, we will end this class here. I'm sorry, I said we would be ending early. In fact, I said said that for each of my classes today and I was not able to end any of them early. I wanted to end them early, but uh, it just turned out that I could not. But anyway, okay. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions. No, sir. No? All right, I'll see you again. On Monday, please make sure to practice. I love this. Love this, sir.